Welcome to MX Timeline, where we break down each year in motocross history. In this video, we are covering the year 1991, starting with the first Supercross in Orlando. see them with their throttles rev, they pop the clutch, and away they go, headed for corner number one. Cheshner, rider number 12, he's riding a tough racing Suzuki. Look at this, Bradshaw and Ward just hammering on each other. Anything that he can use to make up time on these guys, and right now there's nothing out there. And Jeff Ward blasts by Damon Bradshaw, he takes over the number two position. Stanton has moved to third, and Ward goes down. Bale. Michelle Bale's coming on right now. He's got a serious drive right behind him. I think he's putting about a Oh, look at that pass, Marty. Excuse me, but that pass was a thing of beauty. Tishner all the way back to the number three position. Unbelievable. I think he would take it easy at the opening part of the season. Here comes Stanton up the outside to that set of whoops. Side by side. With number two with a points lead. Checkered flag, fist of the air, double bumper. Jeff Stanton has won. Brian Swink would win the 125 main event. To pass and he'll win by a couple of feet as the checkered flag. We're looking for more of this same type of excitement in the 125 main. Of Round two would be Houston. And here we go. We're underway. A good start. And Tenez has company. A whole host of riders on his rear wheel. We have got it. This is now Mr. Bowen. There goes Callan Bowen. Closing on Tyson Bowen, rider number 311. Bowen has been in that spot for a good number of laps. There goes the grass to the inside. He's going to try a block pass, and he gets away with it. A happy young man up over and takes the checkered flag. The Houston Supercross. The Houston crowd's great, and I'm just so excited. The rest of the riders go will be free and clear, and away they go. And it's a good start out front. There's a lot of bumping and banging going on. John Michelle Bale, any Supercross event. Well, it's been so long, you know, KTM and then... John Michelle Bale has pretty much left the rest of the field. Matasevich, uh, Kent Howerton. The 250cc main event is history. It was exciting. Well, after two rounds, Bale leads in series points with Damon Bradshaw. Jeff Next is Anaheim. Down there. When it moves, they go, and they're off. And miss that young man. And are we happy about that? Rider number 125, Jeremy McGrath. He'll win it. I think so, too. In fact, look at that. Lanson tried to put any 125 his teammate Jeremy McGrath. McGrath is all over Lampson. One looking very good. Um, I'm impressed with both of them. Oh yeah, Lampson goes down low. McGrath went high. McGrath way to the crowd. A double bumper and a big number. Thank you, Wendy, and our congratulations to our winner, Jeremy McGrath. The way the card has gone sideways. The gate is around 20 of the fast but uh, no problem. And look out front, that blue number one collapse could very well tell the story of the race. John, right now, Stanton is thinking of one thing, and if I'm just dead, I guess I'm a little worried. Oh, almost! John, they call out a plus shooting. Bale is going to stay back there in that number five position. Jeff Stanton on a Sherwood, Michigan. And there it is for the second time in three events. John, and here's how the good guys finished. It was Stanton Bale, but Jeff Stanton's win catapulted the defending champ into the number one position in the camp. Round four would be at Seattle. Kingo. Super Cross 91, the ultimate challenge. Rider number 425 was going to steal that. Instead, it was Emig going into number two position. Michael Bray definitely is now what he needs to do is to catch, and he does. What a move. He is really on the gas. Out front, here comes McGrath on the inside this time. McGrath is now going high. Let's see what happens. It's with, oh, McGrath puts the hay bale. Just with the lead. Both riders could have been down. Remarkable. Let's see this whip. <laughs> Look at that. Beautiful. And here is the way they finish behind Jeremy McGrath. The riders are eyeing that thing, and indeed, away we go. Larry Ward, the hometown hero, is rocking it. Race we've had all year. Oh, there goes Cooper to the inside, a block pass. Oh, look. There was nowhere to go. Now Ward does the same thing to Cooper, but Cooper's going to have the drive. Goes Ward again, diving down low. Return the favor. Right, boom, right there, got it. Let's see what happens. You called it. He goes to the inside. And he'll take over the lead, I believe, in the Supercross Series with that checkered flag thumb up in the air. So, John Michelle Bale took the win, followed by Damon Bradshaw. Next would be San Diego. Down there. Here we go. Gate is down in the 125 main. Out front. A whole passel of riders. And Emmy goes to the inside. No. 
Look at Craig as he changes lines through the whoop de doo Larry, this is my 88 out front. An unbelievable ride. There goes Lampson, and Lampson moves into the number one position. Here goes McGrath. McGrath is following him. Out of his mind, but the way McGrath is charging. That's there he tough. goes. Look at that. Here comes McGrath up over the top of the finish line jump. The 125cc main event falls to Jeremy McGrath. Watch him. There it goes. And they reacted. Doug Dubach. We love it. We can pick him out. But it's Jeff Stanton and Jeff Ward, the two veterans. Time to stand and Bradshaw almost got there. Ward just went down. Jeff Ward, that make it quick. That's right. Stanton starting to put a little time. There he goes. He made the move. Look at that. Interesting observation. Marty Smith goes out on a limb and says, giving this one to Bale. It's closing. Look at that. Look at that line. He broke concentration, and that's all it took. He got high on that checkered flag, and that's about as much emotion as you get out of So Jean-Michel Bale wins his third event of the season. Jeff Team Honda continues to dominate with Jean-Michel Bale on top. The sixth round would be at Atlanta. Sideways, engines revving, there goes the gate, and we're underway with a 125 muddy start area for Henry and he emerges with a whole shot and he made that uh, he was clipped from behind. Oh, Talent Bowman the goes to the inside and Doug Blue. Let's go back and take a look at that block pass Rod Even and uh, as Henry, Henry blasts right back the racetrack, Doug Henry is followed by Talent Bowman and there goes Bowman and now. Right, one more right behind him now is number 19 Talon and there goes Bowman Helen. and Bowman goes into the lead. They're side by side, pin side, but Henry Allen Bowman emerges with the lead. And there goes Blake. Bowman almost goes down again. This is the one. Straight down. There he is on the right. Oh, in the middle and almost going down. He's going to be bound up in traffic, and Brian, Brian Swink used that traffic to his advantage. Right there. Second flag time, and Brian Swink on the pro circuit. Pete Anderson. Swink on top with a uh, just a tremendous ride. Talon Bowen, he's after Atlanta. And again, it's Swink. He earned that number one. That looks like the hot setup for this start. Let's see what happens. Riders head wide, and Bale is going to pay the price. And Bradshaw picking him up and laying them down. He wants to put as much distance between himself. Unbelievable. This is the third year that we've had action like this. There it goes. Bale, the defending champion, Jean-Michel Bale. There. Now traffic. There he called it, Rod. He was looking for a Bale, and he saw it. Now Jeff Stanton has closed on Bale. That's where the finesse factor comes in. Can he do it one more time? He knows he's only got a half a lap to hang on, and he's got victory in his hand. The finish line, and Bradshaw wins his first main event of the season. The results of this uh, 250 class, and uh, we'll be back shortly. And with that win, here are the standings. It's Bale Stanton, Bradshaw. The first round of pro motocross would follow Atlanta as both series would take turns back in these days. National champion breathing down your neck. You do have your hands full. And that's still a Tyson Bowman. Shows him a wheel. He can hear the engine revving and Kidrowski makes the pass. Kidrowski has not. Kidrowski out front and all alone. And he takes the win in moto number one. Here goes on. And the gate drops in moto number one of the 250 class. Rider number eight is Jean Michel Bale, the world champ. He pulls the whole shot. You never know what Bradshaw is going to do when he's on. He's among the fastest in the world. Finish line jump, and there it is, the checkered flag. Jean-Michel Bale. Gainesville is history. Now, still to come, another second. That's a signal for the riders to click it into gear. He did that. He's running out of the way. The gate has run him out on these racetracks. The leader in the early going is Steve Lampson aboard the Pro Circuit Club. Brown has taken the lead in this one, rider number 483. And Back to the leaders, and Guy Cooper, out of camera range, has taken over the number one spot. Kind of mechanical problem, evidently, with his motorcycle. Cooper, on the other hand, is off on this lap. And now you know why they call him Showtime. Cooper wins the second moto. That's going to give him the point win here at Gainesville. He could do it. The gate is dropped. The final moto of the day, and the season opener thing all over again. And indeed, the running order up front is the same. Jean Michel Bale Hanson did that double that we talked about earlier today. And that's the case, then the stronger of the two could very well persevere when this one is over. Stanton moves the chance to roll over and play dead for the Frenchman. Stanton took an outside line and he railed that berm and he has taken over the number one spot. Jeff Stanton holding off the charge of Jean Michel Bale. Look at this. Again, Bale goes to the helmet manufacturers, the clothing suppliers, all of the contingency suppliers. We're going blue around the outside through the soft stuff and the checker. Jeff Stanton has won moto number two, Jean Michel Bale. It's back to Supercross for Daytona.
Round eight would be in Tempe, Arizona. The cycles getting their balance ready. The gate's dropped and we're underway. Here we go. There's an action there all night tonight and we've got some more. 25, Jeremy McGrath. He's the Western Regional Series points leader. Pull out here now as he tries to move up the good. And we've got more riders down. A Kawasaki rider number 88. That's Mike Craig, the second corner, taking its toll. Very going Mike to provide Craig all kinds of action. I think the rider that Yamaha is saying, uh, look, we've got Damon Bradshaw to staying out and doing his job. Look at there. He's feeling it. He's feeling good. Rider number 18, Jimmy Gaddis, takes the checkered flag. With all right, Wendy, here they are. Jeff Emmy coming out on top. Oh drop any second. Now those butterflies, I'm told, go away. And here they go, headed toward corner number one. Jeff Stanton, that is a believable sight. Out front, he's followed both the board, has been challenging all year long, and he's been as fast on the racetrack as anyone. Fisher, so the, the race is definitely going to get even more interesting if it goes on. Real interesting race. There, there goes Bale to the inside. That's where he made the pass. Chance to go to school on that, because Bale didn't get the job done. Stanton is on Bale still got a wheel in, and look at that. It's going to be enough. Bale has made the pass. And he's going to streak on to the win. Uh, it's history. Jean-Michel Bale. Domination. This is the way they finished in the 250 May. Jean-Michel Bale. Wendy and our congratulations to Bale, who not only won here tonight, but is on top. Next would be Hangtown for round two of the outdoors. Timers exhibition race. And realized, hey, if these old guys can handle it, we ought to be able to. Across in recent memory began with the 125 class pouring into turn one. Despite the misery and the slop, no more than the usual number of guys got tangled up. Buddy Antonez, who hails from Ontario, California, and may never have seen mud, led most of the race, enduring mysteries. But in the end, it was Doug Henry who prevailed. He's a New Englander who has a lot of experience with soggy, sloppy racetracks. His late race pass on Antonez gave Henry his first ever national win. Doug into second place in the series standings behind defending champ Guy Cooper. Now let's move on to the 250cc class. You heard Jeff Stanton a moment ago say the man who rides smart will win. Well, Jean-Michel Bale was smart enough to come to the line with some very big numbers all over himself. He's sure the scorers could identify him. JMB slithered and slipped along in the lead while most of his championship rivals drowned their engines within the first couple of laps. Meanwhile, another New Englander, John Dowd, Chicopee, Massachusetts, caught Bale and took the lead, only to crash and fall behind again. He battled back a second time, repassed Bale, who by now was convinced Dowd was a lapper, and Dowd went on to win his first ever AMA National. Bale and Morocco were tops among the factory team riders, and in this round nine would be in St. Petersburg, Florida. So is the racing, you'll get a taste of that. As this 125 lead, the round of the Honda's going at it, and there's the rider that almost lost. He goes wide in that corner now, trying to squeak by. He takes the alternative line in that tight corner. That's so that long triple, look at this. And Grayson Goodman has slammed his way to riders. And now Buell drawing alongside of the inside. And Buell puts the block pass on. Buell to take the checkered flag. A happy Jeremy Buell. Jeremy Buell wins his first ever Supercross, followed by... Yeah. Here we go. This is about to get sent in and inside. And it's underway. North Carolina, followed by Stanton. In the number two position, Jeff Ward. Down to the Campbell Supercross Series from the Sun Coast Dome in Florida. That's Jean-Michel Bale passing the defending champ. All on... Bale has been the hottest rider on the circuit, and Bale takes over the number two. That type of Supercross action. And Mike, sometimes it's just going to look back to see where Bale was. And when he looked back, Bale made a move. But no, he slacked. Oh, and there's a break. Look at that. That's a break. It's a lot easier to be behind than in front when... Uh, oh, and when Bradshaw, uh, excuse me, almost. Come on. He would have to make one more lap. Place Honda Jean Michel Bale, followed by teammate Jeff Stanton. Our congratulations go out to Jean Michel Bale, who strengthened his. It was on to Pontiac for the next two rounds. Davis losing his momentum, nosing into the back side of the whoop and going over the bar. That impact separated the champ's left shoulder. He attempted to get back into the race. Out of commission, fourth rank Damon Bradshaw took the lead. Bradshaw up there in the dark, major bobble as he washed out the front. For real reason, Matasevich noses over off the lip of a double jump and has to bail out. Big time. Bale scored a monster victory Saturday night in Stanton's absence. That's his sixth win of the season. The big question, how many more? And of course, is Damon's hometown. He won the first Supercross there a year ago. The battle with Ron Tishner. That rounded out the best weekend of the year thus far for the Yellow Bikes. Style to his second win of the year. He has great momentum for Charlotte this weekend. Weekend's impact on those Camel Supercross standings. 
57-point lead with seven races left. His third win in six races. Swink jammed his Honda under Henry into the uphill grandstand hairpin and Chibble en route to completing the hat trick of 1991 wins. The victory gave Swink a 31-point lead over Henry. Borelli. Next would be Charlotte. And Swink by 20 championship points. Buell held the early lead in Charlotte until Carolina native Ryan Hughes came sailing by his fast. Lost his grip and did a rare feet-first dismount en route to an unhappy landing. It's the third time this year Buell and Swink have swept the top two positions. The Honda pair just 17 points apart for the 125 championship. Number 11, Damon Bradshaw. When their favorite son grabbed the early lead over Jean-Michel Bale, Saturday Night Cooper stepped in to take his shot at the local hero. Cooper's never won a Supercross, and for a while it looked like this might be the one. The crowd, and ignoring the pain of an injured thumb, came battling back. This was a classic Supercross confrontation. Dramatically, as Bradshaw became a victim of the rapidly deteriorating track conditions. It's later when Cooper fell out of it, the victim of the slippery slot. The rear wheel as he flung it up on the muddy berm and went on his head. Did Jean-Michel Bale score his seventh win of the 91 Supercross season? Like it or not, a Frenchman is going to be the champion of America's richest and most prestigious. He pads his point lead to 79 over Saturday's 12th place finisher, Mike Kudrowski. It was on to Dallas. Next was Las Vegas. Mike LaRocco. Until the Silver Bowl Supercross field hit turn one with a hustling Hoosier. Fast company. Number one is series champ Jeff Stanton. Number three, former champion Jeff Ward. Way too hot. He hits Stanton. Tumbles right into a TV cameraman. Watch how hard he lands. The front wheel never gets a bite. He rides right up into the face of that berm and into the bales. That couldn't be much fun for guys on a first ever Supercross scene. The pride of LaPorte, Indiana. Mike LaRocco scoring his first Camel Supercross Series win. The results show series leader Jean-Michel Bale. Round 7 on the AMA 125 Western Region Supercross in Las Vegas. And Yamaha mounted Jimmy Button. Still fighting the effects of a wrist injury that sidelined him for two races earlier this year. Sponsored Pro Circuit Honda team and a four-time winner this year. It's back to the outdoors for High Point. Two points paying moto at each class is the gate is down. We're underway with the first rider number 25, a teammate of Lampson's. That's Jeremy Buell. A lot of Guy Cooper, they're side by side. Swink rails to the outside. Cooper got out of shape momentarily. Look at that move. Oh, them out here racing today. McGrath, a Swink, and there goes Brian Swink to the inside of Tishner, and Swink takes over the number one position. Number two position. And here comes Cooper to challenge. Cooper got a good drive off that jump. He moved to the inside of Swink. But Cooper will turn the throttle just as... Look at that! And Cooper does a horrendous get-off. An unbelievable... Guy Cooper coming off the top of that jump and around the corner. Just lost control. Here he is. Too comfortable out front as he's going to just coast toward that checkered flag. And he takes it. He took the lead early in the moto. Went on to collect the, the first 250 moto of the day. There it goes. And we are underway with a race action. A whole shot. He came around that first corner like a freight train. They're getting just that as they crowd that fence line. Bale, meanwhile, has moved to third ahead of Inside, Jones. Can he make the pass? No! They come out of there side by side and Stanton still beside him. Those two have been side by side for several corners throughout this Mount Morris track. They're still together. 
and Bradshaw held Stanton off. Del Bale, he's the only one of these uh, front runners that uh, was able to finish that muddy mess we looked at at the outset of the program at uh, John michelle Bale. Bale put at least 22 points on both of them, and right now Stanton is just giving, look at that, he outbreak Bradshaw at the bottom of that hill. He had an inside line, and he did. Bradshaw behind the trees out of sight. Pick up the pace and Stanton is going with him. Now Stanton goes to the outside. They're side by side. But uh, you'd never know it from watching him ride out here today. Cast a look over his shoulder, pumped up in the air and says, I'm the champ, at least in rising. This track always has that kind of race action. The gate is dropped and round two. Again in Brian Swink, the winner of the first moto. Rider number 42 has taken over the lead. Down the number two position and he is closing on Swink. 1989, Mike Kudrowski riding a Honda, won the 125cc National Championship Series. He would love to repeat, but not today. To take the overall win on the day, his first ever national. And here it goes, and round number two of the 250 class here at Mount Morris is on the racetrack. A spill, and that was Jean-Michel Bale, the series points leader, Bradshaw, the rider that won moto number one. These two riders put on quite a display. The 250 national champ was fit, followed by Doug Dubach, Jeff Matasevich, Larry Brooks, threw out the biggest share of this moto, and then possibly try for a last-ditch effort. Think, but it looks like I'm wrong. Here he comes, Bradshaw beside Stanton, and Bradshaw is going to make the pass. Can he make it stick? Around the corner, a left-hander, and Bradshaw with it. But now, now Stanton, rather, Stanton goes to the inside. Bradshaw looked over at him, and it was it was almost like Bradshaw was giving him room in there. Bradshaw went wide in that corner. Now, one of two things could be happening, one of several things, actually, but my guess is that Bradshaw checkered flag. One more corner, and there it is. Jeff Stanton, today's overall winner in this 250 class. Here comes 25 class, Brian Swink from Fenton, Michigan has taken over the number one spot. Mike in the 250 class, Stanton and Bradshaw gain points on Jean-Michel Bale today. Next up was East Rutherford. Jeff Ward, number three, jumped out to an early lead. Camel Supercross champ, Jeff Stanton. But Stanton quickly shot past Ward. Stanton and Bradshaw having a great battle of their own, not worrying about the championship and giving the fans a night to remember. The Supercross champion were ruined by a shoulder injury earlier in the season has made a remarkable recovery, but Jeff couldn't shake Damon off. In fact, Bradshaw took the lead and managed to maintain it for several laps at mid-race. Once he's got position, he whips to the inside on the next turn, takes a lead, and never surrenders it. That locked down first and second flash. As Stanton launched his uninjured arm in victory, he reminded the New Jersey crowd that the Americans, he managed to prevent Bale from making it official. With a 73-point lead, JMB needs just two points in the remaining three races. Dominated all year. As the 20-rider field worked their way into Langford's inexperience out front showed as he crashed over this double jump, giving the lead away to Swink and third in the point standings behind Buell. Brian Swink maintains his comfortable lead and moves one step closer to... It was back to Supercross as Jeff Ward and Jeff and Meg won in Oklahoma City. Next is San Jose. Now let's begin with the early battle between number 10 Larry Ward and Jeff Ward. Soon major birthday bash and Wardy's also getting married after the season. I don't have to tell you what happens next, do I? Boom, they're both on the ground. Number 15, Doug Dubach, en route to his first Camel Supercross win ever. Leading to the finish line, he's a bike length short of coming from last place to first. Take a look at your top five. Matasovic settled for sixth. Cooper, the CC Championship, featured the battle for second. Second in the standings between the whole shot and leads early over the 88 of Michael Craig and 55, Jimmy Gaddis. Jeremy McGrath with a broken leg, clinching the championship with a ninth place finish. How about it? Kyle passed his third checker of the season, but the big winner on this night got to be the tough guy McGrath, clinching his first 125 championship. Emig leads the race flag to flag, followed by Lampson Craig. The final round of Supercross would be in Los Angeles. Jeff Matasevich got a whole shot. Jeff led his two races once the pressure of the championship chase was lifted, quickly closed in. 
first change of leadership, a heart stopper. In the peristyle section of the Coliseum course, Bale showed Matasevich one of those in-your-face kind of moves. Oh, Looks like a simple case of who can hold it open longer, but at the end of the straight, Matasevich actually went in deeper and harder, and that's on the outside, and took the lead for good. Now behind them, Jeff Stanton with no touching Bale. He streaked to his eighth win of the season, and thus a total blitz at the 1991 Camel Supercross Championship. Here's a look at the final top five in a series that opened in Orlando. Bale had long since clinched the crown, but the race for second stayed close all their minds than the season-ending show at the Los Angeles Coliseum. This was the $25,000 Camel Challenge shootout and proves to the crowd that this would be his ninth. But never got closer than two or three bike lengths. Emig takes home his second straight Camel Challenge win, not to mention the 10 grand that goes with the victory region. The final tally from the Camel Challenge has Emig on top, East Coast champ swing second, followed by Jimmy Button. Next was Red Bud, as it would be the outdoors from here on out. Class, and there they go. Jump here. It was a Jeremy McGrath, number 125, holding down the number two position with a sweeping right-hand U-turn at the top of it. They call it the Le Mans Curve. Tried to get a wheel on the inside, and Emmett goes down. Emmett got a little bit high in McGrath with that pro circuit, 125 cc machine, and right behind they him, make their way around this red bud track. Kudrowski goes to the inside, and Kudrowski takes over the number one position. Well wrapped up, just a few more corners to go, and he'll take the checkered flag in the number two position, and Kudrowski takes the checkered flag. The overall win I started to say of uh, going out and, and placing well, if not winning a national or two per year. The gate is dropped will be between Jeff Stanton, the defending champ, rider number one, Jean Michel Bale holding right jump. Him. We call it a pipe jump, and Bale is going to the outside. He's challenging, but Stanton slammed the door. Side of Bale. He takes over the number two position, and Bradshaw is not done. Through Monza curve, and Bradshaw gets an incredible drive. It's round four of the AMA National Championship Motocross Series. We're at Redbud Track and Trail, Buchanan, Michigan. Bradshaw picking him up and laying him down. We're in the late stages of moto number one, and for all practical purposes, it's all over. And Wait a minute, Jeff Stanton. Jeff Stanton has taken over the lead. Give up, uh, second to Bradshaw, and Stanton crosses the finish line. Cheer about as he takes the checkered flag. There's Jean-Michel Bale. That gate, as soon as it drops, it does. They want to go, and they do. The looks like Eric Kehoe, and it is. It's Kehoe, followed by Jeremy McGrath. He took it right away from Cooper. Meanwhile, out front, it's still Eric Kehoe, number 33, will be in the number five position. Now Emmy goes to the inside of Kehoe, and Emmy finds some running room. Is it going to be enough? It looks well, like... Let's see if he learned anything. He goes to the inside again. Oh, did he ever. A little while longer, but wasn't to be. Kedrowski got the job done. Well, Jeff, Kedrowski second, Guy Cooper's going to come in third. Those riders in between the winner and defending champ in the 250 class. And the heavy like it is Jeff Stanton as they round the corner. Now, Bradshaw was the early leader in the first motor position. I started to say that Jean-Michel Bale slacked off the pace, and he would set back and watch them at 250, and now looking for U.S. titles. He said in the early going that he came four position. He was rider number six. And Stanton has taken over the number one spot. He did track. Here's that double jump. And Bradshaw, for the first time today, turns it into a triple. He just Bale finished in the, the number two position. And Stanton just made a mistake in the trees. Stanton will gain the points on Bale that they had hoped for. Bradshaw wins it. The point standings after four rounds in the 125 class, 250 cc class, and Jean Michel Bale still on top. Next is Lake Sugar Tree.
Next up was Kenworthy's in Ohio. Next up is Southwick. This was the final round of the 250 championship, which was won by JMB. Next is Millville, where the 500 championship begins. It is underway and out front, a dogfight, a drag race between the of Doug Henry. In third place, it's Brian Swink out of Fenton, Michigan. And right behind him comes Mike Kidrowski. They are closing on the leaders now. LaRocco has taken over the up and coming Chargers in this 125 class. And LaRocco goes off the track. Improved before the season is over. He could very, and LaRocco goes down over the number one position. Swink has gone into the lead. He was in second. 
Mike Kidrowski. He has been charging through the pack all day long and now puts himself in position to make the pass, and he does. The latter part of the season that uh, he is going to be the runaway winner. And Steve Lampson, Guy Cooper finished sixth. He's going to change when this series is over. The gate is a uh, drop, and it's the veteran. Two times a 500cc champ on Team Kawasaki. By the rider with the number two on his number plate. That's Jeff Stanton, and Bale has already made the move. We're drawing, and we've reached the halfway point in this 500 moto. That's what the cross flags indicated. But position. Bradshaw is all over Bale. Look at this. He goes wide through the whoops. Can he get there first? He does. Get some of that timing back. Damon Bradshaw falters momentarily around the outside. Bradshaw had it in his mind. It looked like there may have been some running room there, but he just wisely backed off to hold on to that. The talented Frenchman, 22 years old, has already wrapped up third, fourth place in the opening moto with his 500 cc. He was struggling. The gate has dropped, moto number two in the 125 the side of the screen, but they were off to the side of the track. They were not hit. Uh, Riders in front. They're all chasing this young man, though. Steve Lampson, rider number 29. Who Morocco wants to do now is waste no more time. If he can possibly make the pass, he can't. Lampson refuses to cooperate. Now Morocco making a new line. He switched pass. He passed Steve Lampson at the end of that rough whoopie doo section, and his injury suffered a, uh, in a practice incident a week ago. It will be Checker. Steve Lampson. He's the rider that led throughout the biggest share of this one. Don't count out Jeff Ward and uh, a rider that uh, we really did not expect progresses. The gate is dropped, and who gets the whole shot but Damon Bradshaw, Jean Michel Bale. Uh, Jeff Ward holding down the number four position, and in fifth, it's Ron your motorcycle in the 125. And uh, there goes Stanton to the inside again. I'll never get this statement out as Stanton has now made the cycles upright. You'll see them hitting the bumps that kick the motorcycle sideways. It'll kick the rear end straight up in the air. After passing, Bradshaw has had things pretty much his own way, but now being threatened. Here goes Bale to the outside. Stanton's going to take him up high. No, Stanton. You've come up this far to catch me. I'm going to let you have it for the time being to hit Bale. He just let uh, his teammate go by. I think, so. I think as Bale takes the checkered flag for the second time today. Just joined us. We've been watching exciting motocross. Michelle Bale, then Jeff Stanton, Damon Bradshaw, Jeff Ward. With up next was Washougal. Northwest Pines, the 500 National Class, blasted off no the good Stanton is already stalking Jeff as the series champ tries to get back in the thick of the title. Final between them, first Stanton, then Bale caught and passed Ward. You get just a glimpse of Bale here. He eventually got around Stanton and went on to win the moto. Ward got the whole shot with Stanton on his tail. First moto victor, Bale, in about fifth spot. Badly needed a moto victory early in the series, both for the point and the psychological advantage. And 250 national crowns to bail. If number two is going to end up number one in anything this year, it's got to be the 500 series. So in this battle of the two Jeffs, Michigan Stanton chased Californian Ward for all he was worth. Despite the pressure, Ward never flinched, went on to win the race with Stanton second and Bale third. That lifts Ward within three points of Stanton, but they're both chasing Bale, who's out. Brian Swink is determined to maintain a Honda presence in the midst of the Kawasaki and Suzuki story. We'll see Mike LaRocco go on his head. Winner of the last series race, LaRocco was brought in along with Swink. Had a good thing going for a while, but ended up fourth in the first leg as the oft-injured Larry Ward. No doubt feeling pressure to perform and maintain his Suzuki contract uncorked an impressive first moto victory. Number one, who finished second behind his teammate in the first leg, but fell and settled for ninth in round two and third overall. Swank, meanwhile, on the gas big time. LaRocco and Ward both chased him, but neither could catch him. Well, the series leader had a crash and a bad start, relegating him to sixth and fifth place moto finishes. Did all he could to pull out the overall. Fourth place first moto finisher came back to win the second moto, but it left him a point short of Larry Ward, whose first and third places gave him his first win of the year. Swink settled for second, and Cooper again third. Kodrowski still maintains his healthy advantage over Cooper, and Swink made Made a big move on after Washougal, it was on to Bruin. Right on the end, Cooper tending to go up was Guy Cooper, and from the extreme outside, it was Mike Kidrowski. So uphill and out of sight, and coming down the hill the other side, and it's Mike Kidrowski getting a drive around the edge of Cooper, and here comes LaRocco. While those riders went on to campaign the 500cc national title, this is them at bay while Cooper put the maximum points in the hat, and he tried to catch Mike Kidrowski. There goes LaRocco, and LaRocco maybe should not have been riding that 125 class all year long. Mike Flag points over at the crowd. Mike Kidrowski Hard though to bet against Sean Michel Bale. He's been Mr. Motocross this year. The gate is down. This man has. Ward, rider number one, the defending 500cc champ, comes out of the gate. 500cc class. 
but he is chasing the Frenchman for the 500cc national championship title. Now alongside the veteran tries to get a wheel in to go to the inside. Is he going to get the job done? Yes. It was winding down at Broome Tioga, and that was Jean Michel Bale picking this one up in the books for Damon Bradshaw, first moto win of the season for the team Yamaha. He's Jeff Ward, and just gave him a little bit of a nod and a flick of the hand. Says he, Cooper. Jeff Emig was fourth and rounding out the top five. Larry Ward. The gate has got a price for that. He is well back in the pack as Nard Moto number two is underway. Jeff. They don't have to worry about dust. They don't have to worry about lap riders at this point. A little bit harder to open up some ground between himself and Kudrowski. Did not get the job done, and Kudrowski no. makes to the outside. Goes LaRocco. Does he have enough steam, enough juice? Yes, number that two position, and Kudrowski is down in the track. And there goes LaRocco. Ford, Indiana Team Suzuki's Mike LaRocco. He won the first moto, and he's going to win the second. Game rider number 19, Talon Volan, who will take the number five position. Even up in trees to catch all of the exciting motocross action. Jeff Ward out of the line. He managed to come out with a hole shot for the second moto in the row. And for the second Bradshaw, Damon Bradshaw, the first moto winner down in the racetrack. And as the riders come back into our sight, Jeff Ward is missing. Jeff Stanton, rider number two, has taken over the number of crowns in a single season. Bale squirts to the inside of Stanton. Is he going to have the room? Will Stanton give it to him? Stanton has no choice. They're going to let Bale go by. That way they don't have to ride one more lap. And Jean-Michel Bale takes the check. Damon Bradshaw, if he just keeps it upright here for a few more corners. The competition was all Jean-Michel Bale. He finished third in the first moto. Next was Steel City. Three races of the 125 series. The gate is down. Corner. Several riders down. It looks like they're all up and away right, right now in this first 125 moto. There is plenty of it. Mike Kudrowski Morocco has taken over the number three position. The battle up front continues. It's still Kudrowski and Cooper. And this is the last lap. Kudrowski is headed for the checkered flag. He'll win moto number one. Will come home in a number three spot. And Larry Ward, Pennsylvania, just about set to get underway. The gate drops, and here they go. Down a couple of the back markers. They're not hurt. It's Ward out front. There's Jeff Stanton holding second. Damon Bradshaw. And here goes Bale to the inside of his teammate. And Bale looking for running room. Stanton doesn't want to let him by. He has no choice. No rider in the history of American motocross has ever won. And look at that. He shot to the inside, and I don't think Ward even knew he was there. Made the pass. Ward. He's not giving up, and now Ward with a good line. Bale goes around the outside, and Bale establishes himself. Would you look at the lead? The ba and Bale goes down. Now there is a mistake. The pace where there was no line. Jean-Michel Bale, unbelievable bit of riding where he feels that he can look at that bale went from the outside door rather on the racetrack as he heads for the checkered flag bale with a fist up in the air cast another look back and uh, war just wants to go was third uh, we've learned that mike larocco was the gate drops for moto number two While up in the first corner again all riders are up and okay 52 and kidrowski having some problems and brian swink pulls alongside and swink Behind makes him now he takes a wide line and he's actually letting he did indeed. He let to simply not allow him to hold on to the motorcycle throughout a full moto. And there goes LaRocco. He makes the pass. He'll be knocking at the rear door here anytime. And look at this. Mike Kidrowski at the side of the There's track. no team tactic involved here. You might expect LaRocco to move over and let Cooper uh, take the win. Takes the win. Guy Cooper is going to finish in the number two position. CC Bikes. Then they have the Yamahas over the past couple of years. That Yamaha still remains competitive. So why should you touch a good thing? Riders, as uh, one more rider goes down. Jeff Ward, meanwhile, switching lines and looked like he was trying to put a move on uh, Ron Lachine as they passed out. Here he comes, headed for the finish line, and Jeff Ward wins the second moto and overall CC honor. class. What an outstanding ride. There's Jeff Stanton, winner, followed by Emick Ward, Kehoe, and McGrath. Chases is in both the 125 and 500 class, far from over. 500 CC competition, it's all Jean Michel Bale, 185. Jeff it's on to Bud's Creek. Hopefully uh, for Kidrowski in the Kawasaki camp. No more bites. The gate has dropped. Yeah, they're squeezing here together. A couple of them down. All bodies are is, uh, trying to make the moves on Kidrowski. He's trying to take over the number two position off the top of the jump. Cooper do all the work up front. I would think that's what Kidrowski is thinking. And look at that. That's the kind of mistake you've got to watch. Cooper coming down on the front number wheel four of position. Here's our leader, Guy Cooper. Here's Cooper. He's headed toward the checkered flag. Uh, he'll take the win in moto number one. Jeff Emig, rider number 18. Talon Volan for the CC National Championship event is about to get underway. The gate is down. Rider trying to squeeze through closest to the camera, number 100. That was Ron Lachine. He, was, he quickly got into it. Bradshaw. Oh, and Bale stumbles. In the number three position in points and standings as Jean-Michel Bale squeaks to the inside of Ward. Rider number 14 on a KTM was running fifth.
Stanton got off to an excellent start, showing that she's trying to prove a point to the American fans, prove a point to the American riders that he can win. And look at that. He's headed for the checkered flag and the win in moto number one. Back to the number three slot, and Ward is going to hold on to number four. That's Mike Kudrowski, the series points leader in the opening moto. Kudrowski finished fourth. He was followed closely by Guy Cooper. Uh, Mike Kudrowski was there, and indeed it is Oklahoma, a factory Suzuki rider. Let's watch them as they head uphill to put this racetrack together. All of the great racetracks in the world. And now the battle for the number one position is drawing tight. And Kidrowski almost is he going to do it. He's trying to drive to the inside of Cooper. They're side by side. Cooper does not want to give up that slot. He does not want to lose those championship points. Tension of remaining there for the next few laps. He might want to put some pressure on the rear wheel. The battle in the chase with Guy Cooper, then that could be a mistake. And for Cooper, it would smell it. He can feel it. He's headed for the checkered flag. There it is. And there just wasn't enough room. Jeff Emig held on for that. Bail. He pops into view. He's about the eighth or ninth rider uh, from the end as the gate drops and the field heads going of a moto, or on the uh, drop of the gate, I should say, of a moto. You can hear at Bud's Creek. But John Michelle Bale. The winner of moto number one, uh, Damon Bradshaw, rider number 11 aboard the Yamaha, back in third. Slightly away from the number three position is the number one of Jeff Ward. There, Bradshaw got to the inside. Bale falters. He looked to his right, and there is, is uh, Jeff Ward, and he pounces. Bale there because he looked the wrong direction, and Ward made the pass. But look at here. Here goes Ward again. Ward is not giving up. He is relentless in this Double. second. Ward did, and he gained a sizable amount of ground. Now Bale goes to the outside. Is that going to give him the right line? Yes. And has now regained the number one position. Jean-Michel Bale taking a look over his shoulder. He win this one. He'll be followed across the line by Bradshaw Ward. In this, the second moto of the 500cc remaining at the standings in the 125cc national cc competition. It's Bale, Ward, Stanton, Bradshaw. The last round of the outdoors would be you, Nadila. He's had motorcycle problems. This guy has not put together a good year. If he ever does, look out. He is going to be tough. High speed straightaway. A lot of passing will be done in this area all day. And Cooper, Unadilla racetrack. He's still followed by Lampson. Kudrowski running back in the number three position. Opportunity maybe to go to the inside of Cooper with some kind of a block maneuver. Oh, and Kudrowski gets uh, the championship. And here's K uh, Kudrowski right back. He has caught Cooper, come right back to the end. Both riders went down. This race action in the first moto of the 125 class. The season finale is unbelievable. And let, uh, let Guy Cooper go one more time. Cooper is going to win moto number one. Cooper wins the moto. He will be the national champ and will be right back. CC class. The gate goes down and we are underway. Three nationals this year. Jeff Ward has won two. Bale has 235 points. And don't let that big number, 911, uh, fool you. Sean Kalos is a very capable young man. Sean Kalos out of Arizona. A factory a supported rider, Team Kawasaki. Uh, Jean Michel Bale is now chasing Sean Kalos for the lead. Welcome back. If you... But Kalos holds him up. Now Bale switches lines one more time. He is all over this racetrack. He's inventing on this time around. But Kalos has got the drive. That's a long, very high speed. Michel Bale has thrown at him. How long can he keep it up? Your guess is as good as mine. But right now, as they hit that occasions, and he shows no sign of letting up. Now Bale with a great drive. And where we're setting that he's going to do it one more time today and Bale Bale went Sean down. Bale has fallen. Jeff Ward has taken over the number one position in moto number one. And he's out of contention. Jeff Ward will take the win. Jean-Michel Bale is going to finish here for so many years. I would tend to agree. They just never seem to have a bad one. Denny Stevenson on a Suzuki has taken hold of the number one spot. Stevenson. Stevenson goes wide. Lampson gets a great drive. Moto number two. Now we have a battle developing between Mike LaRocco has moved into the number two position and Steve Lampson. And, uh, he just wasn't there. Now he goes to the inside. Can he make the pass? Yes. Talon Volan is right there. Rider number 19. He's in third. And Guy Cooper is fourth. Mike LaRocco on his way to a win in moto number two. Just a few more yards to go. He takes the checkered flag. He's 12th. That's good enough to wrap up the championship. Have you ever seen a young man so happy finishing in 12th? The number two position. Ward won moto number one. It all boils down to who does what. Damon Bradshaw was Sean Kalos in tow. We'll have to wait till the riders sort themselves. Bradshaw doesn't like that. He's coming 
right back at Kalos. I don't know if he'll get the job done. The motorcycle, that's the only thing that can keep Bale from winning this championship. Now Bradshaw goes to the inside of Sean Kalos. He makes the pass. Kalos coming right back together out here today at Unadilla. He is proving to be one of the premier riders. Jeff Ward has moved to camp on his rear wheel. Stanton is right behind him. Pick in. Uh, he's, he's not been able to ride as hard as he would like to all season long. In the corner, he would probably call it slop, but I meant to say stop. Jeff Ward is going to take the win. Come home in the number two position for the day in uh, moto number two. There's two. Comes out of uh, Hudsonville, Michigan. There's Jean-Michel Bale, fifth place, and Bale wraps up the title. Welcome back. The final standings in the 125 class look like this. Mike Kidrowski is the champion. Here's the way they finished in the 500 class. Jean-Michel Bale came out on top. Jeff Ward finished second. A Frenchman that did something that nobody from the U.S. has ever done won three championships in one year. Now let's switch over to the Motocross World Championships, now known as MXGP. Belgian rider Stefan Everts would win the 125 championship. American Trampus Parker would win the 250 championship. Belgian rider Georges Job would win the 500 championship. In 1991, there would be two USGPs, starting with the first one at Glen Helen. They're underway. 40 riders accelerating into turn one. Champ George Jobet, number 14 in the lead, with number 67, Jean-Michel Bale, right on his rear tire. Drop off. As you can see, Dennis, Jobet and Bale are still very aggressive throughout this 1991 season. He has his hands full, though. In fact, here comes Jean-Michel Bale. Bale makes the pass. In fact, he's negotiating this track and making passes without even thinking. I think that he's like... Jeff Ward and the four-time world champ, Belgian George Jobet. Dennis Jeff Ward has made the pass. He's passed George Jobet. Glenn Helen has been the home for this event for two years now. In this both events, we have witnessed some kind of special race. And here he is putting the bid on John Michelle Bale, and he has taken the lead. The crowd is going. The 1991 USGP has been run, and we'll be back to sort out the first motor results. Ward first. Bale second, Jobet despite the championship, and they are underway. And in the inside, it looks like Jean-Michel Bale, according to Flanders' report. And there you see number 67, Jean-Michel Bale, like the Bob Hanna, uh, among others. There is number 67, Jean-Michel Bale. Now Jobet has displaced Dirk Lukens, who earlier curled down third. And there's a pass. Ward just screamed CC motocross machine all day long. Earlier you heard Cliff White talk about them, but he flat gets the job done. Because frankly, is the best there is. So we'll take it. The second USGP would be at Unadilla. He is underway. Now, who, for all practical purposes, called it a day at that point. Into the lead went Jeff Stanton with an unfamiliar GP number, but the style that makes him American champion. Who didn't stay in the States long enough to really make a name for himself, choosing instead to head for Europe in the GP wars while he was still a teenager. Trampas, by the way, says he'll do more racing in America. It was Stanton who stood the tallest by far at the end of the first leg, a runner-up finish by Parker. And in two races a year, Unadilla is one of the world's premier circuits, the entire soil. Second moto conditions, much to the liking of 
unranked Alex Hovelt until Larocco passed him like a sixth, while Larocco, who hails from LaPorte, Indiana, took the lead that he would have to fight hard to protect. He was going to fight with. Coming back from a terrible start, number 19, Stanton, was equally impressive as he dropped Sweden's number 12, Peter Johansson, to fourth. Mike must have had his mind on something other than this steep uphill because he got all twitchy and tipped over. This less than graceful maneuver by Mr. Stanton. Look who came steaming fast just as Jeff was getting back up to speed. All the contenders for the world championship with the ferocity of their battle for the lead. Stanton again with a critical mistake. Rights championship points in this series mean nothing to them. Stanton and LaRocco traded blows a couple of times. Right here as Jeff blasted his way inside. It was LaRocco who managed to pull away slightly and claim the checkered flag. The overall victory on points. And the fans went home securing the... Next would be the Motocross de Nation, which would be hosted at Valkenswaard in the Netherlands. Then the one to five to see colleagues. Together we'll bring six results, and it is from Sweden with number seven, Marcus Hansen. So that on the left side it's Van Dorn, and on the inside it is Paul Marlin, and then Jeff Stanton. And of course, at the same time, the 500 to see. No, it is Marlin who comes through. And then it is uh, with number one, closely followed by Paul Marlin. Paul Marlin, who did so well in the 500cc class in the World Championship this year. Leading. But watch in the back there. It is Jeff Stanton, the 250cc champion of the USA, who goes on the outside and takes the lead. A fantastic maneuver there. Behind him, with number 17, it is Paul Marlin from England. And then another 250cc. And Jeff Stanton, he takes the checkered flag. The man in second position that was Marcus Hansen classification and because of the first so world champion last year this year it was Travis Parker from the USA Damon Bradshaw with number two so after the first real band it is number 30 Pekka Fekoden from Finland and then maybe we can see better at this shot where they are there is Sweden there's another fight for the one two fives you see class but definitely one of the best riders in the world. Pekka Fekkonen with number 30. Is the attack from Bradshaw. Goes to the outside, but no, no, no. Fekkonen, Bradshaw, and then very close by now, indeed the number five there, Manik Barefoot. What a sight to see. And there is Bradshaw. He is through. He takes the lead. Manik Barefoot, the champion of Belgium. And there is the attack. Yes, Barefoot. Belgium, followed by Ke Damon Bradshaw from the finish is there. Barefoot takes a win for Belgium. Behind him in second position, it is Damon Bradshaw. Yes, with number 11, here he comes. And then it is that Belgium is leading with eight points. At the third moto, four seconds to go, and away they are. Once again this week, yes, number seven, Marcus Hansen, like in the first moto, like the 500. And Van Dorn with number 14 in second position. Jeff Stanton with number one. But he is way back from the flying fin, Fekkonen. He takes the inside. Remember, there's two different classifications and Fekkonen nearly loses it there. 50cc machine, then with a 500. And there is Stanton. Stanton not too far behind. With a painful knee which he heard in practice and there is the attack from Stanton and look how he takes the lead of the 500cc class Damon Bradshaw going into the last lap no it is Pusar already who takes the checkered flag at the finish line and then by the number one Jeff Stanton Fekkonen finishes the first four are to 50cc riders and Jeff Stanton is the that indeed the USA takes the world championship again on the left. Jeff Stanton in the middle and Mike Kidrowski. They will have to defend their title. Kidrowski, Bradshaw and Stanton would win the motocross des nations for America. This brings an end to MX Timeline 1991. Please like the video and consider giving us a super thanks. We'll see you in 1992.